the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. Push on, guys, right here. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. I'm Michael. I'm Rob. And uh, we're here with another episode uh, with you guys. Um, Rob, uh, let's see. Today's conversation, I think, uh, definitely is going to be centered around weather and kind of all things that kind of go into, uh, you know, all aspects of looking at the weather, kind of trying to decipher it, um, how to apply it, how to use it to your advantage for, for fishing, um, whether, and I, I think f- obviously this plays a big part for, for boaters, kayakers, um, even for short guys, short guys, I think, you know, you tend to get away with, you can get out there in a little more stickier situations, uh, cause you're not on the water per se. Um, but, uh, this could still be a benefit for, for, for those folks as well. And, uh, and so hopefully by the, by the end of this, this podcast episode, uh, guys, you'll have a better insight into, um, how to look at the weather, um, tools that you can use to, to kind of compile information. And that's really what it's all about is just kind of getting all available information out there about the weather and utilizing it to say, okay, I think today's a good, uh, good day to get out. Um, especially because we get a lot of questions from, I mean, how many calls do you get during the week from small boaters? Oh, about everybody's the, asking what the yeah. waves are going to are like, what they're going to be like tomorrow, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So R- Rob Skilling here knows all of them. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, when I get really busy during the summer, I'm not even looking that much. So, um, but there's a lot of tools out there to help you predict what the waves are going to be like. You know, different apps, different websites, buoy data, and it's not just for use, that information is not just for using it, like you know, for uh, if it's going to be a nice day on the water, yeah. you know, if it's not going to be wavy or whatever, but also just catching fish, you know, certain weather patterns get the fish fired up. Yeah. And that's an important thing to look at too. You know, just, yeah. you know, you see that right day coming, you know, those fish will be biting. You want to be out there that, <laughs> especially this time of year. Yeah. And that, that is huge. Um, and, and so I guess we'll kind of structure this in a way where we'll talk about, um, some of the, the the apps, I'll share some of the ones that I really like. Um, I'm sure some of them kind of overlap with what you use. Uh, we'll talk about some some uh, some sites that you can check out as well. We'll talk about uh, what some of those patterns that you look should look for that might be like big, you know, like those uh, those big uh, you know um, telltale signs that hey, this is this is leading up to something good. Something like you can expect something good to happen here if you get on the water and. Uh, and I think a lot of it really comes down to um, just better bettering your odds on the water. You know, yeah. I, obviously the whole weather conversation, 90% of it is about safety, right? Cause you don't want to go out there when there's four footers ripping, you know? Um, and, and there's a, there's a threshold. I think we we can all agree that, you know, maybe it's two footers, maybe it's three footers, it becomes not as much fun. You can do it in your boat if you have the right kind of a boat, you know, like the big charter boat guys can usually rip, run through it. It's not always, it doesn't always make for the most fun when you're out there trying to manage the boats and the lines and then you got a fish and you're trying to, you know, it's, it can be a real, uh, real big headache. Um, so what we'll start with is, and Rob, you know, feel free, free to um, jump in with yours, but, you know, what are your go-to, if you got three go-to apps that you really look, uh, that you use for um, kind of predicting these, the weather, is it, you know, are they wind or is it uh, overall forecast? You know, what are you using to kind of clue you in you on know, what's going on? For the wind, I mainly use Sailflow. Um, I don't really look at the, like the wave predicting websites or anything like that. I just look at the wind. And uh, usually sail flow is pretty accurate. It's often kind of on the extreme side. So, you know, they're going to always be the highest velocity winds predicted. And so I'll look at those and know that they're probably the worst case scenario. And a lot of times I look at AccuWeather, they're usually a little milder with everything. And I just kind of figure it's going to be somewhere in between the two. Um, That's, you know, they have good hourly forecasts. I look at that a lot. Yeah. Um, And so that's, that's my main my main app for that. And then usually I just use AccuWeather if I'm looking for any other uh, weather patterns, like storms are coming in I can look at the radar. Uh, that That's all I need per se, you know, like those between those two that just gets the job done for me. And you know, it's, 
it's the weather. So even then, sometimes it's wrong. You no, know, we all. I mean, we all. <laughs> we all know that. I think that's why. I, I, I of all the ways to get your weather information, I don't watch the news people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, the, oh yeah, let's not go on that one. But and a lot of times the weather offshore isn't the same as onshore. Yeah, very, so that's a very a lot of those point. forecasts on TV are really more for you know inland inland. So, uh, you know, you got the buoy data. You can go on Sailflow and look up like the Winthrop Harbor buoy and have the wind prediction for out there or some of the other buoys out there. Um, and then on the, you know, you can, you can Google those buoys like the winter Harbor buoy or, you know, the Milwaukee buoy and that, and you can get real time data yeah. for what's going on. And, and then, you know, I'd say it's two footers, the way it's measured, it's probably going to be closer to three, but, um, you get a pretty good idea, you know, the wave intervals, how much time is in between each wave. Yeah. And that tells you something too. Are Are you, um, when you're looking at the weather, how far out are you looking to determine whether or not you're going to go out on a certain day or, or go out at all? You know, it kind of depends on what I'm planning on doing. Yeah. You know, so if I'm going out in the boat, um, I'm probably only looking a day or two ahead of time because any more than that, things change so much. But if I'm going out in a kayak, I'm going to be looking a lot much further ahead of time because I want to see if those winds are going to push water around. And, you know, if we get the right winds, like a good southeast, southwest wind for a couple of days ahead of time, then I know there's a good chance some colder water will roll in near shore and we have a better kayak opportunity. Um, so, yeah, I'll start watching for that more than like wave height or anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I, I'm looking a few days out. And for me, I tend to... Um, I, I do 24 on uh, uh, I do 24 and 24 meaning I look at the weather for the for the so like let's say let's say tomorrow is uh, Sunday well tomorrow is Sunday as of the taping of this but I would look at um, I would look at the last 24 hours of weather patterns and then I would look at the weather for the day of and the day after and, and the reason why I do that um, because, you know, specifically I'm in the kayak, right? So, like, the same thing you said, I want to see how that water had been acting and how it, like, set up for the day I want to fish and then how it's going to go after. Because, uh, like, a real good example was um, in early August, we had strong south winds, really, really ripping for, like, three days, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this is when I went out and I was like, Real strong south winds. I looked at these different weather apps, and and I was like, um, and also you can go onto the, uh, is it no? You can go on the NOAA, and they give you the the one map where it shows you the the water temps. It's like a color coded. Um, I forgot the name of it exactly. Do you, you know what it is? Call by chance. Oh, there's a couple different ones. There's yeah. one that's the color one, right? And then there's another one that just gives you the temperatures, like numerically on the yeah map. yeah so there's one there's one of the maps on noah where it shows you shows the lake and then it has like blue for really cold water and you know red for like warm water i believe it is so you kind of get a visual display and when i looked it all along near shore it was really really dark blue cold and the further you went out it got warmer yep so i used the you know those couple of days of information of weather the, the winds i was checking i went out and found the Kings like really early. And, um, so, so that's for me, you know, I look before and I look a little after to see how everything sets up for that, for that one day to, to, to get out. Um, for apps, I also use cell flow. It's a, it's a pretty, um, uh, it's pretty reliable. I would say, I mean, none of these apps are like a thousand percent. I'm pulling up my apps right now. Uh, where is it at? The other stuff that I like is um, the, um, I use Weather Underground for like the general, you know, seven day forecast and it'll kind of give me the general rundown of what what's going to kind of go at, uh, go on. So that's like my overview. Um, I found this other one called Outcast. Outcast is, uh, gives you um, you can pull up the actual um, buoys. You can pull up the buoys on the go. I find it a little bit easier than trying to go on some of those websites yeah. and stuff. So, you know, it's like I'll pull out the buoy station. Um, and, I mean, Rob can see here. I I, I don't know. I, I can show you guys here. But uh, maybe I can put an overlay 
or whatnot. But I mean, you got all the markers for all all the buoys along the the shoreline. You've got you know Waukegan. You've got down in Chicago. You got some. You've got uh, Kenosha and Milwaukee, so on and so forth. So you can work your way up, and it'll give you on some of them, not all of them. It'll give you the um, uh, the current wave height that's hitting the buoy. So that's a really good one. Yep, the wave height. They'll give you the surface current. That Milwaukee yeah. Atwater buoy, it has temp- it has thermometers every five feet to the bottom. Okay. So you can get a good temperature profile of the water column. Uh, yeah. And even though you might not be fishing Milwaukee, if you can if you watch that and you see colder water rolling in, then you know it's probably depending on where you're fishing, it might be happening by you as well. Right. It's a it's a really big um it's a really big part of it um is is all of that now is there is there a uh for you w- w- whether it's boat or a kayak and I think it, it differs but um what are like those cutoffs in terms of weather you're like all right this is probably not uh, gonna be happening I'm not gonna go out uh, under these conditions for you what are wh- what's that for you what are those and I understand that in some situations in a lot of situations it depends on the craft you're going out on um, depends on your confidence level in, 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 you know, your experience. Cause some folks are new to it and not comfortable. Some folks have been on the water. They're a little more comfortable willing to kind of push it on certain days. Um, for you, what, what are your cutoffs? You know, I'm just out there having fun. So if I'm on the boat, you know, I really don't want to be out there in more than three to four footers. Uh, as far as the wind goes, it's usually going to be like a 20 mile an hour wind. You know, if they're old three or four footers, it's no big deal. Um, that are just kind of rolling. But when you get the choppy ones, you know, uh, unless, you know, we're in a tournament or something, to me, there's no real point in going out there unless the bite's just that good that you have to be there. Um, with the kayak, it's going to be like one to twos. Um, and I really want that wind to be under 15 miles an hour. Because uh, 15 miles an hour is where... The, the waves really build. It kicks. That's when they break. That's when you start seeing white caps and stuff. So um, depending on the situation, if I'm inside the harbor fishing in the kayak, like we've been doing lately, um, I'll, I'll put up with some much higher winds. Yeah. You know, like the last day I was out, there was all of a 25 mile an hour wind. Yeah. And that's when the fish were biting. You know, when that wind died down, the fish stopped biting. Isn't that funny how that works? And it's not like, you know, it's not like the, uh, you know, you're in harbors, and so it's a lot more protection. You're not getting that wave buildup per se. You're getting some of that surface water kind of just moving around, a lot, you know, a little bit. But um, it's funny how that can, you know, even in a harbor, it, it can trigger them, just that strong wind. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, same thing for me. I find that um, over 10 in the kayak is kind of like the – the cutoff for me, if it's really kind of going over 10 consistently, you know, and if it's summertime and you have to kind of go offshore, it's like mm, probably not going to be happening because um, it's real easy for that 10 to kick up. And um, the, the, the worst situation I think you can be in is when you have the winds blowing strong from one direction, but the current, let's say, from, let's say yesterday the winds were coming out of the east at, 30 or something crazy um and then the next day you're out and the winds are blowing from the west well you've got this crazy situation because you got the current still happening the, the current is still blowing from the east like underwater it's still coming in but the surface is going this way so you you end up having like this um, yeah, it's a real uneasy feeling in yeah. the kayak especially yeah you know and even near shore in some of the places when you harbor fish you get the waves bouncing off the break walls. We'll call it and, a soup ball. The soup yeah, ball. And then, oh, it's the worst. Yeah, and oh, you feel like you're just getting God. hit from every direction. It is. You're 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 literally pivoting in a 360 <laughs> like this because the waves from from are coming this way. They're bouncing back off the shoreline or the break walls hard enough to to start fighting this one, and then you got a north wind. So it's like, what is happening right yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, I've never had anything bad happen in the situation, but it it's, it's uneasy. Just, it's, yeah. It, it just doesn't feel good when it, you're going through it. It's a butt clincher. You're literally yeah. just holding tight and, you know, um, setting lines and fighting fish is definitely a, a challenge. Even for small boats, it can be a, a lot to deal with because you're trying to keep your boat position and you're you're fighting all these different directions. Um, you know, a lot of folks call and ask, 
hey, you know, can I get out with my boat, you know, with the weather and with the waves? Um, we mentioned a few apps that I think are worth checking out. Most of them are free, I want to say. I'm, I'm pr- almost pretty sure. I think, yeah, I think they're all Sailflow free. Sailflow is definitely free. Yeah, it's free. Backy weather's free. And uh, even if it wasn't a few bucks to, you know, help you out, I, don't, I think it's probably worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sailflow, you've got, uh, what did I say the other one that I'm using? Uh, Buoy. I apologize, guys. I remember all the names of my apps here. Um, it's uh, Outcast is another one. Um, you've got windy.app, you've got um, Weather Underground, Wonderground uh, are some of the ones that I use um, that, you know, you can get information on your phone, on the go. It helps you kind of uh, give you an idea. Um, some of the websites we know of, Noah's is a good one. They have a lot of information there. It can be hard to digest because of the way it's laid out. It's a government website, so it's not exactly the most user-friendly interface. So um, spend some time getting to understand that and, and looking at it and trying to um, get the information that you're looking for. It's a really good one. Um, you like, uh, what you, you said? Um, I used to mostly sail flow and AccuWeather. Yeah, and AccuWeather. That was, that was the other one. Now, I think that most times folks will, you know, look at these things the day before they're going to go out. Um, and one thing I would say is um, check it throughout the week. I, I, I like to look out ahead of time to see um, what that weather is going to look like for the entire week as it's predicted. And l- so like, let's say you can usually get like a seven day forecast. So if it's Saturday, I'm looking at the forecast. I see like the, the first four days of the week, five days a week look kind of like trash because of the weather. And like, let's say next Friday, um, it looks doable. There's a lot that can happen between today and five or six days. A lot of times those other predictions change. So, you know, definitely stay on top of it. Don't just look, you know, uh, six days out and say, oh, next Friday looks good. We're going to go out then. Check it again Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, thir- you know check it each day because it can change a lot. Um, there's been plenty of times for me where, uh, you know, days look on the forecast a few days out looks like garbage the day before I check it and the whole thing changed. And if I didn't check, I would have missed out on that fishing day. Cause then it turned out to be fairly calm or instead of rainy, it was dry. And, uh, and when you don't check those forecasts, you, you miss out on those opportunities that you could have gone out and, uh, and done some fishing. Uh, I, that, that's something we talk about a lot, which, we're going to talk about it in a separate episode, which is kind of like your fishing efficiency mm-hmm. and how that that alone, uh, we, we could all agree, leads to you catching more fish as being more efficient. I think uh, following your weather patterns, staying on top of it is a, a big factor in it because that's what's going to allow you to even get out in the water to even catch fish and understanding, understanding um, you know, when to identify those opportunities. So, you know, for me, check the weather Throughout the week, you know, um, especially if you're looking at uh, later out in the week, you know, five, six, seven days out, definitely check it, you know, every few days to see how much has changed. You know, if you need to make your plans any different, most folks are fishing on the weekend. So, and that can be challenging because you're limited. You don't, you can't just, you know, let's say, oh, Wednesday turned out to be a great day. The weather changed and it's going to be bluebird skies or just low winds, whatever the case may be. Um, you and I might be able to take advantage of it, but for the most folks that, you know, they got to work, they got family stuff to do. Um, but even if you're just fishing on the weekends, still keep an eye on those weather because, you know, instead of trying to go out on the weekend where the weather is not going to cooperate, you might be better off just going inland or yeah, exactly. do something else. You can like, say, Hey, you know, for one thing, you might be able to get a prediction on where the, like a starting point. Yeah. If you see there's a bunch of south or west winds all week. Very true. So, and you can get out there. Um, the other thing is like, hey, it's going to be a better day to fish a different lake. Get the downriggers off the boat and get your walleye gear out or whatever and be prepared for that. You know, and being versatile and opportunistic is an important part of fishing. Huge. I, I, think, I think that's why we, those are some of the better fishing opportunities. When, when you know, things line up, we see a day that... Um, you know, is a break in the weather. Maybe it's been rough a couple of days and, 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 uh, 
the following day it turns out to be a lot better. And that might be the first chance that those fish have had um, to maybe feed because the last couple of days have been really stirred up and they've probably been in a negative mood. So that first day of settling, there might be more active and you get out there and, and get on those opportunities. You remember that, um, I can't remember. It was an old saying about the winds, right? It was like the old uh, north wind something, west is the best. Do you remember? The- west is the best. I think uh, south blows the lure in a fish's mouth. East fish bite the least. Uh, East is the least, yeah. yeah. And the north, I can, if anyone remembers what that little the little jingle is mm-hmm. or whatever, uh, let us know because I can't remember. I, I just remember a few of them. East is the least, west is the best. Um, let's talk about actual wind directions and how they typically impact our side of the lake. Obviously, it's different for it might be the inverse, I guess, for the for the eastern side of the lake over there in Michigan. But for for the most part here on the western side of of the lake, um, breaking down how the wind direction, and we'll stick to the main four, north, south, east, west, right, Um, how that impacts our fishing. So uh, we'll start with the north. Um, How is that impacting our our waterfronts here um, when you're getting, uh, you know, strong north blows typically? What does it do to the water? What trends do you notice with the fish? Stuff yeah, like that. so normally north winds, you know, kind of stack up some warm water. They're usually going to be the roughest because it's the furthest distance that these waves can come from. Build so, up. Uh, they have the most time to build up and, and get big. So a lot of times that's going to be some of your rougher seas out there. Um, but we do see good fishing patterns that come up from it, you know, like a, a current sets up. And what we, you know, we have the hills and structure out here that run from basically here up uh, to north of Racine. And a lot of times the fish just stack up on the edge of that when you get those north winds. So um, I don't mind north winds when, you know, if you can get out there, if it's fishable yeah. or right after the north winds, at least you can usually get into some really good fishing. What's that cutoff where that north wind blow is just, all right, it's not really yeah, I mean, productive. It, they're, they're, it's going to depend on a couple things. It's going to depend on how long it's been you know, a north wind. So if you're going to go out there on the third day of strong of 20 north. Na- mile an hour north <laughs> winds, it's, it's going to be pretty rough out there. Yeah. But if you get out there, you know, or it just started out of the north in the morning and you've got a, a pretty seaworthy boat, um, you can take advantage of some fishing still where it won't be really rough. You might have some three footers or four footers. Um, it won't be eights yet, but mm. um, they're going to be building. You just have to know they're going to be getting bigger while you're out there. Um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, it's going to take a day and a half to die down a bit. And depending on the time of the year, too, you know, in the spring, if you get those north winds or any real windy conditions in the spring and it's real wavy, um, that cold water tends to calm down much quicker than during the summer. So keep that in mind, too. Um, if it's you get nasty weather early in the spring in April and early May, mm-hmm. you might be able to get right out there pretty quickly. It's going to lay down fast. Yeah. Um is it are there any times where that north um can help the fishing Have you- yeah i mean we see the kings you know get fired up on the edge of that hill when there's north wind so it's definitely um worth getting out there if you can yeah it's uh i had an interesting experience this this fall where um we all know for the most part that water was uh was really warm even in well into uh, September, that water was really, really warm. And um, one night I went out fishing uh, for Kings in the fall and, you know, water was 64 those last, those previous days. But that day I went out, I went, I went, I was, I went out in the evening. So that whole morning, it was a strong, we just had the one, the North blow that came out of nowhere. And uh, it was blowing really strong. Um, I think it might've started like late the night before, but it ripped all through the daytime, the morning, midday, then in the afternoon, it, it shifted and it, it died down. And I was like, all right, you know, strong North winds, it was really cold air blowing from the North, you know, like cold, cold Northern winds. I went out and believe it or not, just from that blow, which was might've been half the day, um, the water dropped about 11 degrees and man, were the fish fired up 
because, you know, they were sitting in 64 degree water. I, when I got out into the harbor, it was 53, 52. I mean, fit, they were jumping everywhere. They were, I mean, you can see when the electronics, you know, before when it was really warm, they're, they're tucked down in the bottom, bottom five feet of water is the most relief they can get. Even though you drop a, a fish hawk down, it's the same temp, top to mm-hmm. bottom, more or less. Um, but they were, you know, you could see them. They were just um, all throughout the water column, very, very active. Um, so I say that to say that uh, in that summertime when that north came in, if it comes with that cold air and it blows that surface water cold, it, I've seen it work. It, it could turn on, mm-hmm. uh, not just on the hill, because this was now in the fall, but I've seen it work. So it the north you know, I think the north. I think it's safe to say the north wind can be productive for for fishing under the right overall circumstances, and certainly not if it. You know, if it's over ten consistently ripping, it, that's when it really builds, and it's like, eh. Yeah, right? I mean, this time of the year, I like north winds quite a bit too. You know, um, any kind of bad weather, really. You know, when I see like, uh, was it two days ago? I was out and I did pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a pretty ripping northwest wind. And fish were biting. It was overcast, and you know, everywhere I went, I caught a fish here, caught a fish there. It was it was pretty good, and uh, you see that a lot this time of year. Just the crappier the weather, the better. Yeah, I my I don't know if I got my feeling in my fingertips back just yet because <laughs> man, it's cold. You know, it, it, we we say this all the time. The 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 weather conditions that we enjoy the most, right? Nice warm day, a little bit of sun out, whatever. Is it always the most conducive uh, for for fishing? Uh, the best for the fish, you know. Like I've caught some of my best fish on the crappy weather. Like the days that we wouldn't like. It's like, oh, I'm miserable. I'm being, I'm, you know, Mother Nature's peeing on me right now. I'm cold, but the fish are biting really good. Mm-hmm. You know. And then the days where it's nice, oh, it's a beautiful day to be out on the boat or the kayak. It's like can't get a bite. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's so funny. Like that, you really got to pay for it to get out there. Um, east winds. This is now. This is the one that uh, I think all of us fear the most. <laughs> you know, the, when we talk about the east winds, um, w- what does it do for the, our, our waters again? You know, it stacks up the warm water on this side, cools it off on the other side. Uh, it can usually be rough. It's not going to be as rough as a, a north wind, but you know, it's usually a choppy, a choppy wave um, if it's strong enough. Uh, as far as fishing goes, you know, you just figure those fish, you know, it's going to stack up that warm water and, and, uh, the fish are going to get deeper, you know, with, with salmon, at least like, you know, summer salmon, um, spring and summer salmon, we're kind of lucky, like they need to eat a lot. So they don't always get turned off by certain fronts and weather like inland fish might, because these fish have to eat a lot. They grow fast. They're always on the move. So there's usually something to catch. You know, th- th- sometimes you see a bite one day is going to be slower than the next, mm-hmm. but um, for the most part, you can still catch fish. It's just a matter of if you can be out there and get to the right area. Yeah. Is um, kind of the same thing? Like um, over 10, you start really feeling it, right? Yeah. You know, for the kayak, I'd say 10. For the boat, it's going to be more 15 to 20 is going to start getting a little tough. Right. And I think the big issue, too, is um, when you get that strong east blow, you're, you're getting, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, you're kind of getting blowback because now you're, you're getting the waves coming in from, from um, east to west, the rolling in east to west. Once it's going to hit the shoreline or break walls at some point, and then it happens, it's kind of ricochets off. Yeah, so then if you're, you're fishing near shore, you're going to have. Yeah, when you're fishing this, near shore, like we do in the kayaks, if we're, you know, fishing for staging kings or the spring coves or whatever, yeah, you're going to get a bunch of that out of an east wind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not necessarily, if you're in the right kayak, it's, you're not really in a dangerous situation unless it's really rough. But um, it's definitely something to be careful about. Yeah. You want definitely. Um, and moving down to the South, which, um, you, 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 you tend to really like the South winds and, uh, it's not something that I heard a lot about in your kind of theory with it from anyone else, but can you share your theory on, on why you feel that South winds are better than the West? Well, yeah, I like South wind, like for kayaks, at least I like the South wind more than west at least leading up to where i'm going fishing because it tends to cool the water or i should say it tends to flip the lake quicker than a west wind you know uh 
everybody over the years would talk about west winds and you know you need to blow that warm water out and the cold water will come in which it does do but the south winds tend to do it quicker and i and a lot of people don't realize that so i'm usually looking for south winds so there's some definitely you know there's some missed opportunities out there if you're only waiting for west winds to go shore fishing or to go kayak fishing um the south winds can be rough and there are a lot of times they're really strong so you you know sometimes you got to wait for it to die down but um it's a really good opportunity to start catching fish near shore again uh after we've had a stretch of time where fish were out deep and that's what happened in august you know like j this past july um we had a lot of north winds and we had good fishing once you could get out there that you know if you're getting out in a boat and you can get out to the fish the, there was really good fishing we had some good kings but you had to get down 80 feet you know you're fishing 120 and you're fishing down 80 feet and where the boats that was great and kayaks that was tough but then right after that we got in the early august and we had a bunch of south winds and sure enough those kings were right in front of the harbor staging already mm -hmm. and uh if you weren't looking for those south winds you you missed out, on, missed a few out. To, on some pretty decent fishing so and there were some big fish out there and and it's just a fun time to catch them you catch them in 20 30 feet of water or even less than that yeah 15 yeah and no one was around no, mm -hmm. no one really knew um yeah you know it when you when you when you really think about it when you when you first hit me with that south over the west thing and i and i sat there like i thought about it and it um it's starting to make sense when you look at when you look at the map, right, and you see the lake, and if you see, you know, if we get strong south winds, keep in mind when you look at from from Indiana waters up to here, it's relatively shallow, right? It's like we're this is the shallowest part of the whole lake is is the southern basin area, and we're considered still southern when you look at the whole mm -hmm. lake, right? Um, so when you look at it. The south winds, if you know, starting down in Indiana, 20, 30 feet through Chicago's 20, 30 feet forever, right? Like, um, if you get strong enough winds, there's less water there for it to blow for the other stuff to come up. So it makes sense that if you get a, you know, a few days of south winds, or it can it can flip that nearshore water. That's exactly what happened when we talked about earlier when I went out on on that day. Um, uh, well, this is early August when we had those south winds. And I looked at the NOAA map, right? And it, and it had the blue all along the, the near shore because all that near shore water, because it's shallower, flipped over. And the deeper water, it didn't turn over as much because there's still a lot more there. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it makes sense. So if, if nothing more, if you walk away from this episode, be checking for those south winds. Yeah, and not just straight south. Southeast is probably the fastest out of all the directions for flipping the lake. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye on it, and it, and it really, it really, it really, uh, it really makes sense, um, you know, to do that. Uh, then of course the West is the best, you know. Um, there's also a downside to the West, right? You know, so when we're looking at the West uh, winds, you know, what are some of the things folks want to look for uh, in, in that regard? Um, you want you know, if you're looking to do shallow water shore fishing, you want to see how long it's been west. You don't want to go out in the first day of west winds because it probably didn't do anything. Right. Didn't change much. But uh, as far as the boats go, um, you're near shore fishing, you know, within a few miles of shore is probably going to be nice and calm. Uh, where it gets tough is, you know, so a lot of times we get really strong west winds and when you have fish out in 200 feet of water, then it, it's rough out there. Right. So that's that's the one downfall of west winds and then the other thing is if you're in a kayak going out there and whether you're going out a mile or two or not it just makes it harder to get back in yeah right because because keep in mind right the, the west is the best is great until you have to you Come got the headwind <laughs> straight in <laughs> right? so you gotta get back to shore so you gotta get back to shore and that's on a boat or not because you still gotta you know you're gonna have the, the waves the chop riding in mm -hmm. and now you're bouncing the whole entire time which yeah you, you just have to remind yourself it's gonna get easier as you get closer to the <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you said that you want you don't want to go out on that first day of West Winds, you know. Well, if you're I, if like if you're doing the near shore thing, if you're shore fishing, yeah, you're waiting for the up long. If you're kayak fishing, you want to stay within that mile of shore, waiting for the up long. Yeah, one day of West Winds isn't going to do it for you. Well, well, if you're going out in a boat, you can get to where the fish are. So don't worry about it. Just right stay out there. What I wanted to ask was. Um, 
what's that period like um, in order to kind of get some kind of substantial drop that we would need West winds? Is it a day, two days? Not, I understand that it's going to depend on the wind, but let's say we're getting a consistent blow of 10 plus, let's say, right? What, what, what do you think? How many days is it before, you know, that surface water goes from, you know, 65 down to 60, say five degrees, you know? You know, it depends on what led up to it. Like if we have a situation like we did this past July, where we had like a month of north winds, it seemed, yeah, it's going to take at least a week for a west wind to make a difference. Um, now, if you just have cold water that's, you know, 40 feet down, 30 feet down, and you don't have to go out past 100 feet of water to find it, yeah. If it, I mean, a 10-mile-an-hour 10, a 10 west wind isn't accomplishing much, but if you get a 15 to 20, it might only take a day or two for that to get in. And make it happen. It's not bad. I, I, I definitely, circling back to the south, I definitely see that um, it, it feels like, and even just from what I experienced this year, um, it could be one day it could, it could turn. If it's strong, because we had like that south at 20, 25, yep. that one day made a difference. Mm-hmm. Like the next day it was already dropping. So um, food for thought, again, circling back and, uh, as to uh, this might be hard for some folks to grasp. Like, I've always heard the west is the best. Well, Maybe maybe south is uh Yeah, everybody looks like at let at me like I'm crazy when I tell them to wait for a south wind, forget about the west yeah. wind so much. Might be a lot of controversy with this episode. <laughs> we unintended. We're like, we didn't think this was gonna be a uh a, a big deal. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this episode on uh weather and how do you can u- utilize it um into your fishing, how it can really, really do a lot to just increase your fishing opportunities. And uh hopefully you guys take a look at those apps and those tools and those websites to um, give you the information, start to understand it a lot more. And uh, we're pretty confident that you're going to see just an overall increase in, in, in your fishing experience and your catches because you're taking advantage of those we- weather opportunities. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode. We'll see you guys uh, real soon in the next one. And as always, feel free to stop by the shop for any gear you may need, any questions, uh, want to talk about the weather. We're here, stop on by. We'll, we're happy to talk with you about that. And uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you uh, go ahead and like to share the podcast with a, uh, with a friend and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right.